Hello and welcome back to my Samurai Jack Retrospective. I'm your host, that Minnesotan guy. I hope you're all ready to shake your groove today, because this episode is about a rave. Now let's review Samurai Jack, episode 28, Jack and the Rave. We open with Jack walking in the forest at dusk. As the night begins to take over, Jack finds a town. <sighs> Man, I'm tired as well. I need a quick nap. Don't expect me to wake up anytime soon. Oh, that felt good. But I feel weird just for doing that. Anyway, back to the review. Jack enters the town, which is strangely deserted at this time of night. After passing a fountain, he finds a nearby inn. If you thought curfew was hard enough, this tops it by far. We are then introduced to the most annoying character in this episode, the sad proprietor. For a majority of this episode, he does nothing but cry for what seems like an eternity. Is this a lodging facility? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, but every time I see this episode, I just cringe at this guy. Maybe it's because the noise is degrading to my ears, or the fact that I just can't handle a situation like this very well. The sad proprietor then shows Jack his room. Features include the bed, the bathroom, and the window. We then learn why the man is crying. The music. The feeling is mutual. With so much crap on the radio nowadays, I feel the need to retreat into the past to find music that had effort and talent put into it. And for the most part, it's worked really well for me. Jack hears a noise and sees red eyes coming from the forest. <laughs> No, 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 not them. I dealt with these people years ago. I won't submit, I swear. Swift fans, 1D fans, rap hip hop fans, Gangnam Style fans, and countless others. Never liked any of them, and they are the type of person I resisted against. The people in my generation had horrible tastes in a lot of things, but the music was the icing on the already rotten cake. Yes, please. Anyway, this episode is notorious for the techno music present throughout. Let's hear this sample as the ravers destroy the town. catchy for the most part. The man then goes to his daughter Olivia, who has been infected by the music. At first you think she'll snap out of it, but the influence of the music is too great. Before she can hurt her father, Jack protects him. Remember Jack, they are human. Here's a quick reminder for you. No way! They're children! <laughs> I find it funny how the teenagers react to this. I can only imagine how many people in my high school days would have been pissed off if they heard this statement told to their faces. The teens attack, but then they are withdrawn back to the source of the music. Jack is told that they are the children of Aku. The man's daughter Olivia fell under the influence of this madness after bringing home a record. Truly, the conformists have spread their evil. Believe me, I had to face this problem a lot when I was in high school. Jack promises to free Olivia and all the other teenagers. He makes his way through the forest and later hides in a bush. Jack needs a disguise to blend in and steals this outfit.
Question. Why does the teenager still use a pacifier? He would be called a freak for that. I hope Jack doesn't use baby powder after this ordeal, because that would really suck. Anyway, get ready to shake your groove. Shasha! Did you like that? Here's some more for you. Also, watch the moves that Jack makes to impress some of the teens. Now that was kick ass. Let's keep the beat going. Shasha! This music is way better than anything on modern radio. Who's the DJ responsible for this? Welcome, brothers and sisters! Can I get a Kazam? Kazam! Kazam! This is DJ Stylebator. He puts on the show for these teens and continues to drop the noise. The sound is what causes the teens to be violent. The same beat from the attack plays again, but... I've got a selection of tunes on this iPod that would really get everyone excited. Anyway, back to the review. Public enemy number one, the scratch of that coos groove. Samurai whack, let's mix it up with a taste of the bass. Beats in his face, the brand new hardcore track, Jack Attack. I'll find a way for you all to hear Jack Attack. Jack defends himself from the teens and gets onto the scaffolding. He knocks a few down, but their numbers are too great. Like before, the track known as Jack Attack is catchy. Certainly something to dance to, if you're into that kind of thing. Jack is grabbed by strings, but he cuts them down. Jack knocks Stalbator out, and before he can destroy the player, Stalbator fires from his golden tooth. Jack goes shirtless, and Stalbator unintentionally destroys the speakers. Jack punches him, and we get this exchange. Music Maker Man, your beats are bad. That's right, they're bad. Not bad good, bad bad. Whatever. Now that was rad. Shasha! Jack and Stylebator duke it out with each showing off their moves. Jack destroys Stylebator's headphones and they continue to fight until Jack knocks him back into the crowd. Jack's obviously the better dancer here. All that training he did was worth the effort. Style Bator isn't done yet. He forms a mech from the speakers and his player. Before Jack can draw his sword, Style Bator knocks him into the mud. Style Bator gains the upper hand with a combination of lights, guns, and the mech's fists. Jack looks at the teens and refuses to give up. He retrieves his sword and destroys the mech, which renders the music silent. With the teens now free, 
Jack tells them to return home and never dance to Aku's music again. Now everyone can find better music to listen to. Also, this episode was adapted into a game on Cartoon Network's website called Rave Slaves. I mention this because both the episode and the game are enjoyable, but I prefer the game over the episode by a long shot. We end this episode with Olivia and her father being reunited. Thank you. Watcha! So that was Jack and the Rave. This episode had a fun soundtrack, and I did enjoy the action. Like I said before, the sad proprietor was very annoying. Now maybe it's just me, but I find this episode to be an interesting parallel to how modern music can corrupt the mind. Join me next time when I review episode 29. Now just remember folks, I make this show for fun. I'm that Minnesotan guy, bringing you all quality entertainment since 1996. Or is it 1986, or 1976, or maybe 1970? I don't know. I'll see you all next time.